Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today for an overview of Bill 6, the Public Health Amendment Act 2023. I will begin by providing the context for today's proposed changes to the Public Health Act. This summer, in its ruling on the Ingram case, the Court of King's Bench made an important decision regarding government decision making during the COVID-19 pandemic. In her decision, the Honorable Justice Romaine held that the Public Health Act in its current form required that the decisions with respect to public health orders, namely those that were issued under Section 29 of the Act in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, be made by the Chief Medical Officer of Health or their statutorily authorized delegates. Delegation of the Chief Medical Officer of Health's decision-making authority to Cabinet is not permitted by the Act in its current state. In, res in response to the de this decision, government reviewed the Public Health Act, and today's proposed amendments are a result of that review. Amendments to the Public Health Act would provide clarity about who is responsible for decisions on public health orders during a declared state of public health emergency. Specifically, they would make it clear that cabinet and cabinet committees would have discretionary authority to make the final decision about public health orders during a declared state of public health emergency. I want to be clear that cabinet and cabinet committees would only make decisions after consulting with and reviewing any advice from Alberta's Chief Medical Officer of Health. Cabinet would be responsible for decisions respecting all persons or a group of persons, including a group of individuals, businesses, nonprofits, and educational settings. Medical officers of health, including the Chief Medical Officer of Health, would retain final decision-making authority for orders impacting a specific person or persons or a specific place. The Ingram decision showed that Alberta needs to clarify the roles and responsibilities of cabinet and medical officers of health, including the chief medical officer of health, so that we can be in line with our own legislation in future declared states of public health emergencies. As we learned during the COVID-19 pandemic, the impacts of a public health emergency are significant and wide ranging. Some of these impacts include the economic and mental health well-being of Albertans. Albertans elect public health officials, public officials to make big decisions on their behalf. So it's important that elected officials make the final decisions during a declared state of public health emergency. These decisions should be based on scientific and medical evidence, which is why we will continue to rely on the Chief Medical Officer of Health to perform a vital role in these situations. To further clarify Cabinet's final decision-making authority, proposed changes in Bill 6 add a paramountcy clause that would provide Cabinet with the discretionary authority to, by order, reverse or vary any public health decision of any decision-maker under the Act. This means that even outside of a declared state of public health emergency, Cabinet could have final decision-making authority over the decisions made under the Public Health Act. During a public health emergency, the lines of authority, responsibility, and accountability must be clear, and they must follow the law. Albertans expect and deserve no less. The proposed amendments to the Public Health Act make these necessary clarifications so Alberta can stay aligned within its own legislation in future public health emergencies. Thank you very much. I will now take questions. It will now take um, questions from the media, um, starting from the floor before moving on to the phone line. You are invited to ask one question and one follow-up. <laughs> okay, so it's more of a technical question, but on this paramountcy clause, you say any decision under the Public Health Act. So I, I can understand that the uh, emergency situation sometimes goes on even when a state of public emergency hasn't been declared. But with this, why, why do you need those powers for some of the other uh, areas of the Act, like uh, foodborne illness outbreaks? Boil water advisories, closure mm -hmm. orders, work orders. Why do you need that well, much power? 
Thank you for the question. It's important once again to remember that a public health emergency can exist outside of a declared state of emergency. It can exist uh, during or after a public health emerg state of emergency has been declared. Alberta's response uh, occurred during COVID-19, uh, during and after the public health uh, orders had sometimes lapsed. It's important to note that um, there should be an ability for cabinet to continue to make decisions on the public health emergencies, notwithstanding the fact of whether a public health state of emergency has been declared. Giving cabinet the ability to vary or um, revise public health decisions in the context of a public health uh, emergency is in line with the Ingram decision. This is really what's guiding most of our decision making processes here, along with the idea that there are certain other factors that we consider as cabinet, as elected representatives uh, of Albertans to make sure that it, the current decisions that are being made in a, uh, in a public health emergency, notwithstanding whether or not it is a declared state of emergency, reflect the current times uh, that we, are, we, we potentially could be in. Okay, I can, I can grasp the public health emergency because COVID was still going on mm -hmm. after the emergency declaration had lapsed. I'm asking about other areas of right. the act. Yeah, and I, again, I would say to you that cabinet must contemplate a wide variety of factors uh, in any type of decision-making process, including ones involving uh, public health issues. Um, that go over and beyond uh, the, the actual uh, public health matter that they are contemplating. Things like the well-being of Albertans, things like um, the you know, economic well-being, mental health well-being, the uh, social well-being of individuals, the ability to interact with one another. There are any number of issues that Cabinet will contemplate in respect to uh, uh, whatever issue we may, we may encounter in the future. Okay, take the next question, Matthew. We've also got Preston Manning's panel and that report due uh, sometime this month, I believe. Well, why not wait for that feedback? So it looks like they were examining a pretty similar topic. Right. Um, the, it, w I've had the opportunity with me uh, to meet with Mr. Manning. I've not seen the final report. I believe that the decisions that are being contemplated, or sorry, the, uh, the amendment being contemplated now will be in line with that. But notwithstanding that, I think we have to respect the decision of the court. We've got to look at the reasoning that uh, Justice Romain provided to all of us. Uh, I believe that her reasoning was sound. I believe that it was good. I believe that was, it was very helpful in guiding the proposed amendments to Bill 6. And uh, we're going to continue on with that because I think it will also align with uh, Mr. Manning's report as well. A lot of people who wrote into that panel in the survey, they, they wanted a stronger CMOH. They wanted a greater reliance on medical expertise. What would, what would you say to them right now? I would say that this changes none of that. This can we continue to seek the participation, the, the pivotal role of the CMOH in all of the decision making processes. And I'd also say that Albertans also want our, the elected representatives to help with decision making as well. I think that it's important that the Albertans know that the people that they elected uh, into this government have a pivotal role in making the, those decisions uh, on their behalf. And I think that it follows that Albertans or elected officials, uh, we have a, all have a responsibility to uh, act in the best interest of Albertans. We'll continue to do that. Um, this legislation uh, allows for cabinet to make decisions pivotal to, to all Albertans in many different ways, while also making sure that we continue to respect and rely on the CMOH and the other medical experts uh, in making those decisions. Thank you. Next question. Um, Reading about that parallel clause, it brings flashbacks of sort of those first drafts we saw of the Sovereignty Act, and it brings to mind possibly unchecked powers. How do you respond to that? This is in the scope and lens of a public, uh, the Public Health Act and, and nothing more. The paramountcy clause is triggered in areas where cabinet as the elected uh, government of this time is able to make decisions on behalf of Albertans. Once again, uh, I, I want to stress to you that public health is an absolute top priority for this government, but we also have uh, a team of cabinet members who have bring a breadth of uh, information and experience to the table, and they are the elected representatives of Albertans. And so we would have to, we would like to be able to weigh in on multiple different areas um, where we can <coughs> contemplate some of the other concerns that are being raised by Albertans at the same time. If an event gives rise to that, 
Um, it's difficult to speculate on what that might be, but it certainly would allow uh, cabinet to make decisions where, a, uh, where appropriate. I know that you said earlier that you would still be consulting with the CMOH, mm -hmm. but I just wonder if people would be attracted to that role if they know that certain decisions would just be disregarded if decisions that they made were simply reversed. What's the point of even having those health officials then? Well, I think that every government department, every government minister has a team of experts within it that provides advice and provides guidance and information. And I think this is no different. Using the CMOH to provide that medical guidance is absolutely essential. I think that we will, um, there would be no scenario where a CMOH or the medical team or other experts would not be utilized fully and that we would contemplate uh, all of that information available and making decisions. Um, is there anything in place to ensure that cabinet does take those recommendations and advice from the chief medical health officer? Just sort of kind of questioning again that role if it influences, you know, what they have. Mm -hmm. The generally speaking, uh, all decisions that are made by cabinet are influenced and, pro and assisted by department officials and other experts. Uh, this would be again no different than that. We would always rely on the expert guidance and information of our uh, CMOH in making these decisions. That hasn't changed. It hasn't changed during the pandemic. It will not change going forward. All right, we will now go to the phone lines. Operator, can you move, um, pass through the uh, call on line? Uh, currently, there are no callers in queue. Okay, one last call for um, reporters online to join the queue. Okay, guess that concludes our announcement. Thank you very much. Um, um, Catherine, you had you had your your time. Amendment. Thank you. It's been amended multiple times throughout the pandemic, including to remove powers of cabinet to unilaterally put in these these orders. So, I guess why is it okay when there's no state of emergency, but not okay when there is a state of emergency? Like, I'm not sure I understand your question. During during the pandemic, there were amendments to the Public Health Act. And one of the things that the government decided at the time was that cabinet shouldn't get to unilaterally rewrite legislation, right? It was, it was considered too much power from cabinet. So I'm wondering why is it okay outside of a, a public health emergency to give, give those powers? Well, I mean, first off, if I, if I understand your question, um, government, uh, by virtue of the fact that it is the, uh, you know, the elected representatives of the time can make uh, decisions with respect to uh, making or proposing amendments and uh, through thorough debate and whatnot in the legislature uh, will consider whether or not that, uh, that proposed amendment or bill or statute or whatever moves forward. If, if your question is about whether or not cabinet should have a decision-making authority when it comes to uh, decisions made under the Public Health Act. We've heard loud and clear that Albertans are looking to their elected representatives to have a uh, significant role in the decision-making process. Uh, this does not mean that the Chief Medical Officer of Health or other medical officers will not be fully utilized to fulfill their pivotal role of providing expert clinical advice to cabinet to help guide the decision-making process. Uh, the CMOH would still be responsible for monitoring the health of Albertans and making recommendations uh, to the Ministry of Health and to cabinet as well. It would also allow cabinet to make decisions, ultimate final decisions, uh, on, on the in, in areas of public health as they impact uh, general Albertans. Once again, I think that the, um, the, the, the fundamental prior, priority remains the, the health and well-being of Albertans, but cabinet also has other factors and considerations to take into account as well. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.